A very warm welcome to The Social Show. My name is Viwe Cholwana and of course I will be with you from 9.30 to 10 a.m. Only on at Brand Live Radio or if you want to know a little bit more um, about what we do, you can go to www.social-tv.co.za and you can find some video content and you can watch uh, what's going on within the world of CSI, CSR, CSV. I was speaking to somebody yesterday and I told them that I am so interested and so invested in uh, corporate social investment and responsibility and all they could say to me was, huh, what is that? And that's what the show is about. It's about educating those who don't know, those who are starting businesses, those who are starting any initiatives about what's going on, what's the climate like, what can you do to actually make a difference within the private sector especially if you are interested in working in the private sector of course we want to make money we want to make sure that whatever money we make is um sustainable first of all it it it, it will carry on and, and increase employment for people but more than that that you have some sort of um cause that you believe in some sort of ideal that you believe in some sort of um holistic concept around how to make sure that people's lives especially those who are disadvantaged are uh, helped a little bit more and that's what i'm here to do to aid you to guide you to help you and if you have any questions again go to at brand live radio on twitter or on www.brandlive.co.za on facebook otherwise you can just call me on 11 8606 that's 011 083 8606 wow without any further ado we're going to go straight into the news for the day Right, alcohol drinks giant Pernod Ricard has joined the war on plastic by declaring that it will no longer use non-biodegradable plastic straws and stirrers in any part of its business. The group has asked all its affiliates globally to ensure plastic is not used at any Pernod Ricard uh, events in the future. The drinks industry has been guilty of using plastic straws and stirrers for decades and following the rebirth of cocktails. There have been an explosion in their usage dawning glasses uh, globally. A straw, which is only used on average for 20 minutes, can take more than 200 years to break down into smaller pieces and often does not, have, does not get fully disintegrated. Along with contributing to the United Nations Sustainability Go- Development Goals, the SDGs, Pernod uh, Ricard says its commitment to reducing its impact on the environment um, roadmap includes reducing its waste to landfills with an ambitious goal from 913 tons today to zero in 2020. In other news, the South African National Treasury published the second draft of the Carbon Tax Bill for public comment on the 14th of December 2017. And since South Africa endorsed uh, the 2015 Paris Agreement on Climate Change and indicated its commitment to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, the carbon tax has formed an important part of South Africa's package of measures to reduce its emissions. The Paris Agreement comes into operation in 2020. In light of this, National Treasury, in its uh, media statement on the 14th of December 2017, indicated that the actual data of implementation of the carbon tax will be announced during the 2018 um, budget or the 2019 budget, taking into account the state of the economy. The carbon tax is predicted, or predicated rather, on the polluter pays principle and ensures that the real cost of greenhouse gas emissions to the environment and society are incorporated into the price of carbon intensive production activities. And lastly, in our news, after 200 years of making beer, Newlands Brewery in Cape Town is going to going into the water business. Queues at the brewery uh, spring where free water can be collected have become almost un- unmanageable as the reality of day zero has dawned on all Cape Townians. Now, South African breweries has indicated their willingness to assist in this bottling and distribution of water drawn from Newlands Spring, according to a statement on Sunday from Michael Mboffi, spokesperson of the Western Cape Premier, Helen Zilla. He said, Zilla would attend a meeting at the brewery on Monday to discuss the rollout of the plan. The city of Cape Town told Times Live on Friday that its plans for 200 water collection points around the city where citizens were able to collect a daily allowance of 25 liters were still being finalized. But it's still unable, we're still unable however to find any specific information on the project. Now that concludes our news for the day. When I was five years old, I was an annoying kid playing all the time and asking my mom to buy me that toy or that toy. And I always wonder why my dad can do the same. 
Why he needs to spend his time like doing boring things like waking up in the morning very early or coming back late at night. But you know, time has changed. From 2007 to 2012, the number of unemployed people has increased from 170 million to 202 million. And 75 million young people just like me are currently unemployed. So I guess that my father, he had an easier time finding a job. But we can change that. Imagine that you have $1.25. In the United States, you can have five bags of deep cheese and a pretzel. In London, you can have an instant soup. In India, you can have two steamed rice cakes. In Ghana, you can have a small box of chicken and rice. While you're imagining the tasty smell of that chicken and rice, 1.3 billion people around the world only have $1.25 to survive per day. They don't have a choice, but you do. My name is Andrew Lowndes. I'm the UK and Ireland sales manager for Preslit Care. At Preslit Care, we're very passionate about providing access for people with uh, physical disabilities. And we're very passionate about the Changing Places campaign that provide larger accessible toilet and changing facilities. It's fantastic when we can see the smile on the faces of users. That's our reward, is to see the the satisfaction and the enjoyment that people have. Well, you are back on the social show with myself, a viewer. And if you missed out on the first half of the show, fret not because the podcast will be back up um, by the end of the day. I'm pretty sure. Um, uh, and then if you have any questions or queries or have any initiatives or ideas that you want to send me, please don't be afraid to tweet me. Tweet me, I'm so lonely at Brand Life Radio on Twitter, and I'll definitely uh, make it a point for us to have an engagement online. Of course, um, that is obviously in, in, in regards to the topic, or perhaps our website if you are on www.social-tv.co.za. One word comes to mind when I think of 2017, and I know at a whole show when I started uh, the year on what. 2017 meant to to this show specifically but now if you think about I want to think about it in a little bit more of a, a bigger a bigger scope when you think about 2017 within CSR within CSI and CSV and I think the word is uh, unprecedented the events of the past year have tested companies in a number of ways and changed mainstream discourse about the role corporations should play in advancing and addressing social and global challenges and of course I have to uh, Give a little shout out to H and M uh, for restarting uh, the year off um, in a in an interesting way. Of course, again, giving uh, corporations a really challenging, I suppose, challenging for them. However, for me, it's about time uh, that they actually got involved in a little bit more a activist work and understood their role in maintaining and understanding, and not even and and just in, uh, what's the word. Uh, uh, highlighting social cohesion, I suppose. Um, and there's no turning back, right? In 2018, the expectation is that companies will continue to expand their activism on uh, investment, um, the, how things matter to their employees and their customers and their communities. And here today, I'm going to speak a little bit about the, the trends that we can expect for 2018. Um, and, and I think most of them do come back from the bounce, sort of a bounce back from 2017 to say, were you guys prepared? Did you know your how how important um, your campaigns were? I mean, we saw Dove, we saw Nivea, we saw so many different um, companies really not make the cut um, from the activism point of view. And I know sometimes when you talk about CSI, we think about um, strategies around education, health. Um, we talk about strategies around, um, you know, disaster relief, um, money into education and training, money into sk skills development and youth de development, which I think is still important and still an important part of um, CSI. But I also think that um, a, a new route, which um, is, is really, really something that they haven't been speaking on or, or really 
thinking about is activism from the ground up. Inequality, discrimination, racism, violence against women, how are our corporations contributing to those causes? And of course, there are a few uh, key trends that uh, we have to, um, to watch out for for 2018 of course i got this actual look um uh, from the for women forbes uh and you can find it um on their website and they'll definitely they definitely have a more uh, bigger a bigger understanding of it i'm just going to give you an, a quick fix so that you can be in the loop and you don't have to feel like you're outside of the conversation um and you can uh, start your csi year effectively now in february susan fowler published a whistleblowing essay about sexism and harassment during her time um, at uber and by the end of the year the stories piled up and the hashtag me too took off and we all know about it making it abundantly clear that women in every industry have had to deal with not only rampant sexual harassment but also with corporate cultures and policies that are designed to keep them quiet and disempowered and 2017 was about you know speaking truth to power 2018 will be focused on concrete change, policy change, uh, institutional change, both in terms of um, internal reporting uh, policies and addressing workplace inequality. As part of this, um, I think we're likely to see companies sort of take a hard look at the gender makeup of their leadership teams and boards and implement real steps to increase the number of women on both. Um, so I think one of the biggest trends that are going to come out, and um, this is something that I really sort of predicted while speaking to my editor was the expansion of the diversity conversation you know we've obviously seen in the past year that uh you know it's important that we remember that diversity is an important part of our corporate culture the diversity conversation has to become a little bit broader though this year and it seems to be more and more focused on gender it's got to be more than more, about more than just women um, it has to be about creating a workforce that embraces every culture, language, age, sexual orientation, disability, background, and experience, and giving a voice to those differences. You know, as our population and workforce continue to grow more diverse, companies will need to focus on creating company cultures, experiences, and products that are uh, speaking to a wider range of identities and perspectives. And I think that's very important. And we're seeing a lot of it uh, sort of really open up in, in America because uh, Trump has been really... I think poking the bear and um, now we're, you know, a lot of companies are forced to face these diversity conversations, um, whether they like it or they're not. Um, and I think it's quite different in South Africa when I think about what diversity means, because we actually have, um, a, a, you know, a, an actual, uh, I, I say we have, residue and residue probably is the wrong wrong word but we have actual residue still creeping in from our past of uh, you know apartheid and, and all the injustices that came with it and i think um those injustices as much as they have passed they have a very big influence on in what diversity means and our di idea of di diversity in this country and i think it's about time that corporations also took that into consideration not only are you going to empower the black woman or empower the black man or empower you know the young child who just came out of varsity who happens to be black and happens to come from a disadvantaged home or previous disadvantaged home rather um you're also looking at it holistically to say what were the um, what are what are the kind of environments that they grew up in, and which kind of environments are they coming into, and what is that transition going to be like? How are they going to feel empowered so that they can show their best, they can be their best in that specific role, in that specific space that they're in? And I also see, I foresee a lot of new entrepreneurs coming into this space, a lot of new social entrepreneurs, black, white, Indian, you name it, coming in with a new philosophy around diversification and inclusivity. And um, I can't wait to have them on our show on Thursday. Actually, I'm starting out with the social entrepreneurship thursday i'm gonna have it for the next about four or five weeks where i'm gonna have social entrepreneurs young young spirited uh, PE, you know um, innovators who want to change the world and make a profit which i cannot uh, be more happy about Another trend that's going to be coming out of 2018 in CSI and CSR is focused and forward-thinking brand activism. Now, much of the CEO and corporate activism we witnessed, the, um, you know, last year and this year, I suppose, response to um, Trump, especially in America, as a response to the presidential announcements that are coming out. But also, I think, to a large extent, it was also um, in our country, uh, our president did have a few... Um, announcements uh, perhaps not even announcements just actions that uh you know allowed corporate activism to sort of start out in south africa leading ceos ensured reactive statements on everything from um 
immigration to uh, transgender um, you know issues um, white supremacy um, no violence against women um, climate control um, this whole entire situation a lot of CEOs took the leading stances because they're privately owned. They don't have to have any specific policies that really hold them down. And we saw quite a few of them. Um, and just off the top of, top of my head, um, I'm just thinking of a lot of um, of the uh, BDS movement, which has really, you know, allowed a lot of the leaders and a lot of the CEOs and a lot of media personalities to have a voice outside of what the government or whoever else has to say. Um, just an example of looking at how you know our leaders especially in the private sector have become more focused and forward thinking understanding that having a voice having a stance may not always affect your your brand or your business negatively business leaders have been heard in important new ways um and have been sh- have been doing their very most the very best to to really show their power and show their voices and show that they don't have to go with the flow um and it will be crucial again for 2018 for business leaders to add to this by stating what they are for namely in an effort to ensure that the economic the economy uh, develops we've got a new ANC leader who is quite economically affiliated as we all know so it'd be quite interesting to see what um, CEOs this year will be um, voicing out and what they will be standing up on and standing against, um, especially in terms of corruption, in terms of state state capture, in terms of, um, you know, now this, this really horrible wave around uh, sexual harassment as well as kidnapping and sex trafficking, which has been happening in South Africa, abductions, um, uh, you know, people being killed, children going missing, what are our CEOs? What what kind of activism is around that? What are our CEOs doing? And it's going to be quite interesting to see them going full throttle on that. Um, and if you have any any new initiatives that initiatives that you know that are CEO led, where you see your your private sector leader really taking a stance, really taking a stand for whatever it is that is not necessarily um, traditional CSI, please let me know at Brand Live Radio, and I will definitely send him or her a shout out because I definitely think those are the people we need to be engaged with because they do have some sort of agency they're not just going with the flow another trend that will be happening uh, this year is we're going to see a shift from disaster recovery to climate resilience um this is very important because a lot of uh, disasters happened last year a lot of hurricanes if you think about puerto rico houston a number of uh, really big um you know states and countries were affected by disasters that were man-made i mean that were a uh, natural natural disaster of course and um it be very important now that we start looking at resilience more than we look at recovery, um, which I think is important. In 2017, we saw a lot of disaster recovery. I mean, it was just the other day or a month ago that I only found out that Puerto Rican schools were starting to get back onto track. Um, their networks are starting to get back on track. They were starting to speak to people um, across the country, their family members, to tell them they're okay. So there's a lot of, um, uh, I think, research that's going to be coming into 2018 around disaster recovery um, being lessened and we're seeing more of a climate resilience, an idea that is more prevention uh, than just a cure. So according to the BSR report, The Future of Sustainable Business, no company will be immune to the consequences of climate change and to protect their businesses, supply chains and communities Companies must invest in innovative technology to redefine businesses, mo- business models and support policies that can address critical climate-related cha- challenges. I mean, not even far from home last year. I'm sure you you saw news, a few flooding, flooding. You saw um, a lot of um, you know dry spells. Now we have Cape Town without the water. We have to start looking at being more climate resilient this year. That is the trend that is being predicted. And uh, just lastly, we have. Uh, more CSR in the C suit now with the heightened expectations on corporations as influences in the social and environmental sphere. More companies are bringing CSR into the C suit. Now we definitely see an increase in the elevation of corporate citizenship in executive status. Uh, this was said by Catherine Smith, who's the executive director of the Boston College Center of Corporate Citizenship. According to research from the BCCCC, the number of companies directing a corporate citizenship from the C-suite has increased nearly 75% compared to five years ago. Now, this is just a few of the trends that I have uh, spoken 
or maybe just giving you a highlight and an idea as to what's going to be happening in CSI. And if you were just thinking along the lines, uh, then you're on the right track. But if not, do take heed, do take uh, the advice and hopefully it will make a difference in your current CSI strategy. Um, there's so much more that uh, uh, that is predicted, but I'll definitely uh, maybe let you know in another show. Um, for now, we're going to take a short break and we come back. Uh, we're going to have things to remember. In 2016, the United Nations defined 17 goals for a sustainable development towards the protection of our planet's resources and a peaceful and prosper humanity. They build the frame for a global transformation by 2030. But this time, something is different. It was a joint approach with politics, business, academia, and NGOs working together. And BASF was apart from the beginning. We want to be a driving force in reaching the SDGs because we see chemistry as an enabler for a sustainable future. The SDGs guide us in our decision-making as we strive for solutions that have a positive impact on reaching these global goals. For example, we produce more solutions which tackle water scarcity, like water filtration and desalination. Or we support people in countries with malnutrition, for example, with food fortification developments. And we are committed to save our valuable resources globally, for example, through better recycling processes and more biodegradable substances. We contribute to the SDGs and thus add value for BASF, the environment, and society. For us, sustainability makes good business sense and is good for the planet. So let's come together and partner to reach the sustainable development goals. BASF, we create chemistry. Have you ever thought about the power of social media? Social media has the power to make your business grow. Grow! Yeah. Why don't you let us manage your social media? Because our business is to see your business grow. Visit us at www.beastownmedia.co.za. Well, you know what time it is whenever you hear the dramatic music. It's time for things to remember. I only have the music because I definitely think you will not forget it. I hope you hear it in your dreams. I hope you hear it on your way to work, on your way back. But anyway, things to remember is that part of the show where I give you a little something that perhaps uh, may take you on your day, may make you think something differently, may make you change something about yourself, something about your friends, something in your colleagues, the conversations that make, make you think a little bit further about things. It's so just a conversation starter. And uh, I'll be back with uh, uh, my comments after this uh, things to remember clip. Did you know that every 20 seconds someone becomes a victim of domestic violence violence against women particularly intimate partner violence and sexual violence are major health problems and violations of women's human rights violence against women is a form of violence that is gender-based violence occurs because of their gender specifically because they are women Violence against women may take different forms at the individual, community, and societal level. The most common forms of violence include that of rape, domestic violence, stalking, sexual harassment, human trafficking, forced prostitution, state violence, and female genital mutilation. Global estimates published by the World Health Organization indicate that about one in three women worldwide have experienced either physical and or sexual violence in their lifetime. Most of this violence is intimate partner violence. Physical injuries are some of the most visible and at times most deadly consequences of gender-based violence. But the long-term mental health consequences are often invisible Right, the long-term uh, mental and uh, psychological uh, effects of violence against women are usually um, not directly, uh, you know, worked with or just 
identified uh, so quickly as you know the physical uh, abuse of course i'm talking about uh, violence against women and i think it's never too late or too early to speak about no violence against women no violence against children and uh, it's very important that we start off on the right foot uh, for 2018 um, i know that uh, the cm lee story has been all over the news where uh, you know uh, uh, she had been apparently receiving threats from an unknown man for months and was lost in live on January 4th when she left her workplace and was apparently you know CCTV footage showed that she was uh, abducted by a driver of a black Mercedes Benz um, that took her and uh, you know eventually found we found out that her body was uh, burnt in a cane field near the New Hanover on Wednesday afternoon um a few Wednesdays afternoon, actually, I think a week ago. And I think the story of CM Lee is just like every other story that we heard last year, especially I remember there's a big trending idea or a big trending um, violence and story, stories around women being kidnapped, very gruesome, scary stories. And it's very important that it doesn't just become a, a trend. And I think that's my important uh, message for the day is that if um, you really want to change uh, the society and how it views women and how men can can just take and, and, and kill in the way that they have and, and just sex and, and, and just trafficking in general, um, I think we need to start speaking about it as, as 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 much as we can. We need to start being aware of it and we need to start calling it out uh, when we see it. And I think uh, um, in just the memory of CM, CM Lee, we like to just say, send our condolences to her family. And just say, you know, no violence against women, not in 2018 anyway. Not ever. Not ever. And that concludes our show for the day. I hope things to remember did give you something to think about, something to just ponder on. And if you don't know anything about the CM Lee um, investigation, please don't be afraid to just Google it, find out a little bit more. Get yourself educated so that we can talk a little bit more about uh, why our girls are missing. Uh, that concludes my show for the day. Thank you so much for listening. Um, it's been great. I'll be back again, same time, same place, only on the social show every single day from 9.30 to 10 a.m. Love and light. You're listening to brandlive.co.za. Today. Today.